to continue our discussion on factoring polynomials, this um, particular segment is going to take a look at trinomials, or polynomials in three terms. So remember, your first step is to always remember to take the greatest common factor out first. Then you'll count the number of terms. Our, our previous um, segment was factoring polynomials with four terms. We're going to focus on three terms now, and there are two scenarios that come about. The easier scenario is the situation where we have a trinomial of something x squared plus something x plus a constant, or ax squared plus bx plus c, where this coefficient in front of the x squared term is always equal to 1. That's a little bit easier. The second uh, actually, a few segments from now, we're going to look at factoring trinomials where the coefficient in front of the x squared term is not equal to 1. A little bit more challenging. Let's go ahead and talk about this and why it works. So first, I'd like to remind you of multiplying two binomials together. When you take x plus 3 and multiply it by x plus 4 and FOIL that, your first terms multiply together to be x squared then your outside terms multiply together to be a 4x. Your inside terms are a positive 3x. Those are commonly like terms. And then your last terms, the 3 times 4, is a 12. And these combine, their like terms combine, to be a 7x. And we'll bring our x squared down and our positive 12. This is the kind of polynomial, a trinomial, that we're going to factor at this point in time. What I'd like you to notice is that this problem is going to have this as an answer in its factored form. Would you please notice that there's um, two binomials with an x in the front of each of them because of this x squared term. And then this 3 and this 4, the 3 and the 4 multiplies to be 12, but the 3 and the 4 adds to be a 7. So we're going to be looking at this, um, this trinomial, and we're going to be looking for two numbers that multiply to be this 12, and they have to add, those very two numbers have to add to be the 7. Let's go ahead and do a problem. So if we had x squared plus 5x plus 6, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be 6. And then I want those two numbers to add to be 5. So if the the number that you're looking for, the two numbers you're looking for that multiply to be something is quite large, you just got to start listing them in a table of values. So the first thing that comes to my head when I think of two numbers that multiply to be 6 are 2 times 3. But please, in case that was not the correct alternative, don't forget about 6 times 1. Of those two pairs of factors, I'm looking for the pair that adds to be 5, and it's this one. It's the 2 plus the 3 adds to be the 5, not the 6 plus 1, which adds to be 7. Once I find out what those two values are, I just take this trinomial and break it down into the product of two binomials. I put an x in the front of each of those because that product will be this x squared term. I put a plus 2 in one and a plus 3 in the other. It doesn't matter which spot. And if I were to multiply this back out again, I have x times x is the x squared term. x times 3 is that 3x. 2 times x is the 2x for a sum of 5x. And 2 times 3 finally is that 6. And sure enough, when I check this out, I can see that I got that problem correct. Let's go ahead and do a few more because we're going to change the signs here in the trinomial and it'll be a little bit more challenging. All right, so let's take this one. We're going to continue with plus signs. So x squared plus 10x plus 9. So I'm going to factor this into the product of two binomials. When I'm factoring these trinomials where there's a 1 in front of the x squared term, we don't ever write that. This is always going to be x and x because their product is x squared. So again, I'm focusing on the scenario where there's a 1 in front of that x squared term. I'm now looking for two numbers that multiply to be the number 9, and I need them to add to be the number 10. 3 times 3 comes to mind, but that doesn't add to be 10. So I'm probably going to have to use 9 and 1, and I can put them in either spot. 
their product is nine and they do add to be that 10 and I can foil it to check it and see how I did. Let's try another, but let's put some minus signs in here. So let's take m squared minus 6m plus 8. So I'm looking to break this into the product of two binomials where there's an m in the front of each of these, and I want their product to be a positive 8. So I want these two numbers to multiply together to be a positive 8, and I want them to add to be a negative 6. So let's see, how can I make two numbers multiply together to be positive? And they have to add to be a negative number. Two positive numbers multiply to be a positive, but they would never add to be a negative. So I guess I'm going to have to use two negative numbers, like maybe a negative 8 times a negative 1, or maybe a negative 4 times a negative 2, and that's really my only options, uh, pairings for factors that multiply to be 8. And I had to use two negative signs, and this particular pair right here, the negative 4 and the negative 2, do add to be a negative 6, and so I'm going to put a minus 4 in one of these, a minus 2 in the other of these, and I'm going to foil it out and check it to see if I get my original problem. Let's do another. Um, this one, let's, let's go ahead, same thing, let's go with a minus sign in front of the middle term. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be a positive 20. Multiply to be a positive number. But they have to add to be a negative 12. So if you can go without doing the table, that would be awesome. And you would say to yourself, for these two numbers to multiply to be positive, I better use two negative numbers because I want their sum to be a negative 12. Let's see, two numbers that multiply to be 20. Boy, I better list these. Multiply to be a positive 20. Sign's got to be um, both negative. So I might use a negative 1 times, sorry about that, negative 20. Or maybe a negative 2 times a negative 10. Or maybe a negative 4 times a negative 5. So in the event that I can't just see the answer, just go ahead and list all the factors of 20. I'm looking for the one that adds to be a negative 12. And it looks like it's this one, because a negative 2 plus a negative 10 adds to be a negative 12. So I'm going to go ahead and put in here d minus 2 and d minus 10 and foil it out to see if I get um, the original problem, and I would. Let's change this sign to be positive and that sign to be negative next. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be a negative 30, and I want them to add to be a positive 7. So if two numbers are going to multiply together to be a negative number, one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative, period. I'm looking to factor this trinomial, so personally I'm probably going to go ahead and put the a's down and put a plus sign in front of one and a minus sign in front of the other. I may struggle a little bit with my times tables, and so maybe I should go over here and list some tables of values. So if I struggle with that, I go immediately with 1 times the number, and I want it to be negative. And since I want this to be negative, I might try both options, make the 1 positive and the 30 negative, or make the 1 negative and the 30 positive. And then I say to myself, does 2 divide into 30? And it does. 15 times. So I put a 2 down and a negative 15, and I put a negative 2 down and a positive 15. And then I say to myself, does 3 go into 30? And it sure does. Um, I have 3 times a negative 10, or a negative 3 times a positive 10. And then I ask myself, does 4 go into 30? No. Does 5 go into 30? Yes. 6 times. And so I would have 5 times a negative 6, or a negative 5 times a positive 6. I'm looking for the batch of numbers here that would add up to be a positive 7, and I'm not going to take the time or waste your time to look at all of them. It looks to me like this is the pairing, that a negative 3 and a positive 10 would add to be 7. 
And so I'm going to come over here and put the minus 3 right here and the positive 10 right here, and I'll foil it out and check it to see if it works. Let's do one more with minus signs in both of these. So let's go with um, x squared minus 2x minus 8. And because of the minus sign right here, I know one of these has to be positive and one of those has to be negative. I wonder if you could do this without creating your table of values. For example, what comes to mind when you think of two numbers that multiply to be 8? You know, for me it's 4 times 2. And one of them has to have a plus sign and one of them has to have a minus sign. But I want their sum to be add to be a negative number. So I better make the 4, the bigger number, negative, and the 2, the smaller number, positive, so that these two numbers would add to be that negative 2 and multiply to be that negative 8. And again, finally, x times x is x squared. I'm just checking. This is a minus 4x. This is a positive 2x. They do indeed add to be a negative 2x. And 2 times a minus 4 is a minus 8. And when I'm done checking this, I can say, oh, look, I got my original answer, my original problem, so I have factored this problem correctly. Here is my answer. We'll try a few, um, a little bit more challenging problems, trinomials, still with ones in front of the x squared term in our next segment.